In this video, I will discuss spiritual preparedness as it relates to the return of Christ and also in preparation for the end of our lives in our current physical bodies. I will discuss practical preparedness in a separate video. Living in a state of spiritual preparedness is probably the single most important thing that we should be doing at this time. We live in spiritual preparedness in expectancy of the return of Christ and also as a preparation for the day when our spirit will leave our physical bodies, whichever occurs first. To be spiritually prepared means that we live our lives in such a way that our hearts and our actions are pleasing to God. Spiritual preparedness is not a one-size-fits-all task because each of us are in different places along our journeys. Even still, I want to share with you a few general principles that hopefully can help you along the way. For those that have not even started the journey with Christ and are currently outside of the covenant, the very first step that you want to take is to give your life to Christ. Understand that you are a sinner and that God is holy and that your current situation places you under God's wrath. God is holy and he will judge sin. But in his immeasurable love for us, he sent his son to be a sacrifice for our sins. Meaning that the punishment of our sins was placed upon Jesus at the cross. And that those who believe on him are cleansed from their sins and unrighteousness by his blood. To receive the gift of God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness of your sins. The Bible in Romans 10, 9 says that all you have to do is to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. John 3, 16 states that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So for those that are outside of the covenant of God's love, this is your starting point. Pray and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Confess faith in the life, death, and resurrection of his son, and you will be saved. And once you're saved, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is a deposit guaranteeing your salvation. These scriptures are included in the description box. For those of us that are already under God's covenant of love, our spiritual preparedness consists of making sure that we remain in God's love through obedience to his word and by following the direction of the Holy Spirit. The Bible is our instruction book to live godly lives. With that being said, I want to highlight a few principles that are helpful to follow to remain spiritually prepared. The first principle, of course, is prayer. The Bible tells us that we are to pray on all occasions and that we should pray without ceasing. The best prayer that we can pray is the one left to us by Jesus, which is the Lord's Prayer. The act of prayer is the acknowledgement and realization that you are not merely a physical being and that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Prayer focuses our minds on the things of God and gives us a much greater level of understanding and perception than what we can obtain merely through our physical senses. 
It is also the process by which we seek God and invite him into our earthly human lives and affairs. The second principle for spiritual preparedness is forgiveness. In prayer, we confess our sins before God and seek his forgiveness. But we also have to be willing to forgive others that have sinned against us. Forgiving others can be very hard and challenging, depending upon the offense, but it is a requirement of God. It is something that we have to work at, sometimes on a daily basis. But as we confess our sins and seek God's forgiveness, it will become easier to realize that just as God forgives us, we can forgive others. The third principle for spiritual preparedness is learning to rely on the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us into all truth and that he would show us things to come. But you have to train yourself to be attentive and to recognize his leading, which brings us to the fourth principle of spiritual preparedness, and that is to read and study the word of God. David said that God's word was a lamp unto his feet and a light to his path. Make time on a daily basis to study and meditate upon God's word. You have to put the word of God into your heart and you do this by reading the word. And once you have entered the word into your heart, you will begin to recognize that the Holy Spirit will recall this word to you and enable you to know how to apply it in different situations that you find yourself in. The Holy Spirit and the word of God are the power of God for your life. The fifth and final principle of spiritual preparedness that I want to share is that we should seek to live holy lives. To live a holy life means that we have to live our lives modeled after the word of God and not modeled after the world. We are called to be separate from the world. We are in the world, but are not of the world. And this should be reflected in our lives. I hope that you will find these five principles of spiritual preparedness helpful. Please leave a comment below and share how you are preparing yourself spiritually. Thank you so much for watching.